You have my thanks, Commander Shepard. You bought us some time, though probably not much. This isn't over yet. Who did you say you were? Dr. Gavin Archer, chief scientist at this facility, and probably the only one left. You owe us that explanation. This is Project Overlord, an attempt to gain influence over the Geth by interfacing a human mind with a VI. The results have been less than satisfactory. It looks like some progress was made. Yes. Even amid chaos, there are lessons to be learned. My brother, David, volunteered to serve as a test subject, but his mind couldn't handle the VI connection. He's like a virus now, infecting our networks and seizing control of any technology he finds. It's why you had to destroy the dish. Imagine if his program got off-world. How does he take control of electronics? This is a hybrid intelligence the likes of which I've never seen. I don't know where the man ends and the machine begins. should have considered that before you started the experiment. We couldn't be expected to account for every outcome. Certainly not the abomination David has become. David, the VI has fortified itself in the main laboratory at Atlas Station. It's in lockdown now. To enter, you need to manually override security from our facilities in the Prometheus and Vulcan stations. How does the lockdown work? It's a fail-safe procedure in the event of an emergency. Normally, all three project leads have to agree to cancel the lockdown. I'm the only one left now. I can give my authorization, but you'll have to manually reset the other two yourself. What happens if I have to kill your brother? Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. Tell me about the Vulcan and Prometheus stations. Vulcan station is our geothermal plant. It generates power for the four outposts. Prometheus station is a crashed Geth ship full of dormant machines. We use them for our experiments. What happens on this station? This is Hermes station. Our communications uplink with the wider galaxy. If you hadn't destroyed the dish in time, the outcome would have been catastrophic. What went wrong with the experiment? David volunteered to interface with the VI to give it genuine consciousness. Theoretically, it should have been safe, but with artificial intelligence, there's no such thing as safe. Then you shouldn't have attempted it. And what if you've never attempted to find the Reapers, Commander Shepard? Where would the galaxy be then? Sometimes you have to ignore the risks. Tell me more about Project Overlord. We wanted to turn the Geth's religious impulse into a weapon. When we saw them following Saren, we realized they could be swayed. And if a proper figurehead was created, a virus with a face, if you will, the Geth might be controlled. That's an ambitious undertaking. It would be the perfect weapon. Victory without casualties. We could avoid war with the Geth altogether. That was the plan, anyway. What can you tell me about Atlas Station? Atlas Station is the main laboratory where all of our VI experiments take place. It's your final goal once you've overridden the lockdown. It's also where my brother became something else. I'm heading out now. The other stations are all within driving distance. Best of luck, Commander. Well, four and a half minutes in, and I can finally say welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 2. We are continuing with the DLC pack, Project Overlord. And we've landed on this planet, found everybody was dead. And it turns out... <laughs> there was a reason for it. A rogue VI system has gone and killed everybody. Now, they were experimenting with a form of artificial intelligence, which 
in the Mass Effect storyline is an illegal thing. Uh, in Citadel space, true artificial intelligence is outlawed because a number of years earlier, about 300 years before the start of the game, the Quarians had gone and created an artificial intelligent race called the Geth, which we've been fighting a lot up until now. Uh, drove off the edge there. Okay, here is the first opportunity. Well, not the first opportunity I've had, but certainly the first time in this playthrough that I have gotten to use the hammerhead. Now, the hammerhead replaces the Mako, which was a sort of six-wheeled tank that was used in the first Mass Effect game and was at the center of my complaints about that game, the reasons why I didn't... It was something I really didn't like. The Mako controlled very poorly. It would basically be able to climb anything, but it would roll and bounce all around, and it was running around like it had absolutely no gravity. It was weird. And it was a big shortcoming in the game, but they replaced it in Mass Effect 2 with the Make with the uh, Hammerhead, both of them being named after sharks. Now, we're going to be fighting robots, so it's best to bring along people with tech skills. So, Miranda and Legion, it is. Oh. Now, the rogue AI or VI, I don't know what we're calling it right now, has taken control of all of these robots, those Loki mech. There, we're taking control. Okay, oh. he was cut off. The VI infection, they're calling it, is screwing up with communications. Now, the hammerhead controls a whole lot better than the maker does. Not only is it just, it drives around a little bit, sort of like a hovercraft, but is also capable of flying up a little bit. See, that was unintentional. So you can do it on your own. And instead of firing a machine gun and a cannon, it fires missiles, which is pretty cool. Check that out. I guess one of the big reasons why I didn't like the Mako... Well, I mean, I did kind of like the idea of the Mako in the first game, because much of what Mass Effect was was just running around in corridors and stuff. The Mako gave the opportunity of expanding of the area that you'd be playing in to, like, the surface of the moon at one point you could do, or a bunch of different planets, and the Mako could run around and traverse these big environments as opposed to just little ones that you do on foot. Unfortunately, it was something that wasn't programmed very well, or they didn't put a whole lot of effort into it. I'll check out the hammerhead can dig up stuff that's in the ground. And then it really became an issue when you had to pilot the Mako. I forget what the name of the planet was, but you had to go and, and wipe out a, a Geth invasion, and you had to go... It, it's where you first found out about Sovereign and all that. I forget what the planet was called. But you had to drive the Mako around in this narrow place, shooting Geth. It was really hard to control. It was really weird. What you gotta do here is hop from rock to rock. The hammerhead can survive for a couple of seconds in the lava, but you don't want to stay there. It would be really bad for you. Step on the steam. And like the Mako before it, it has limited flight, but it, it controls a lot better than the Mako did. The Mako, when you try making the thing fly, it's more than likely just going to go wild and land upside down, in which it always somehow righted itself. Okay. More of these little bastard robots. The Loki Max. That 
this point in the game, these stupid little robots are more of a joke than anything. These were the things we fought at the beginning of the game. And they're not hard to take down. You knock them off their feet and they're not fighting anymore. You, uh... Oh, it's a dead guy. They don't take much damage before they go down. What is up with that weird talky face thing? It's like it's trying to communicate, but it doesn't know how to talk. Hmm. Well, anyway. Can't let it stop our mission. We have to head back to the Hammerhead now and continue on. Another thing about the Hammerhead was it was originally intended. Well, it was not intended, but it was introduced to the game Mass Effect 2 via a DLC pack called Firewalker. Now, for this LP series, I considered doing the Firewalker missions. The reason why I didn't was because they're really long, it takes a while to complete all of them, and there was really no plot that's pushed forward or storyline at all that's pushed forward through the Firewalker pack. The only reason why I was considering doing it is because it allowed me to play the Hammerhead. Which is something I was thinking I wouldn't get a chance to do. I'd forgotten that you could do it in this mission. A little weird that they... that this ship here, that this... I don't know what to call this, really. Hovercraft? Anyway, it's not part of the base game itself. You have to be using one of the DLC packs in order to play the Hammerhead. Now granted, the Firewalker pack actually came with the game. It, I mean, it wasn't on the disc or anything. You could download it for free so long as you bought the game new. It was, I guess, Bioware's attempt to uh, curb used game sales. Not that it really made a big difference for me, because I bought this for PC, and used game sales on the PC are exceedingly rare. Or at least compared to console games. You could probably get it off of Amazon. Or eBay or something, but... Let's do more lava jumping. You know, why aren't we using the shuttle? That thing doesn't have to land every few seconds. It doesn't take off and land exactly where we need to go. Whatever. Oh, jeez. Ah! If you hit the sides, they sink a lot quicker. Okay, I'm close enough. Now, what we're doing here is we have to go and release some manual control locks which would remove the the rogue VI from other parts of the computer system. Now the first lock was already released by that douchebag that we had rescued in the beginning of the mission uh, in the last episode. Unfortunately he's too much of a puss to go and <laughs> release the other locks himself so he sent They've us. Oh, more low pieces. Let's do green. Let's show the difference between the normal Loki and the one that the rogue VI is controlling. Oh, blew it up in the side. As I'm doing this commentary, it's 
January of 2012, and in March of 2012, the game Mass Effect 3 is scheduled to come out. And that's supposed to be like the, the conclusion of Commander Shepard's storyline anyway. Anyway, Mass Effect 3 will be the conclusion of Commander Shepard's storyline. There's been some talk from Bioware that they might continue the series in some form, in one form or another, just without Mass uh, Commander Shepard being the main character. A bit of a weird cut there. I sometimes introduce cuts into the game for various purposes. If I had stood around too long, or I spent too much time running back and forth, or if I had died or something like that, then I cut it out like that, just to explain myself a little bit. In this case, I had died. I went far too far. And that big bastard firing missiles punished me for it. I love that grenade launcher. the hell is that about? Well, there's the second lock. Second lock is released. in the Hammerhead, and this will be the end of this mission, not the end of the whole of the whole uh, Project Overlord pack, just this one part of the mission. In the next one, we'll continue on to t disengage the third lock. <laughs>